And it's probably the harder thing to do. You know, it would be easy to keep going as is because we do have a good system and everything in place. You know, shaking it up is is harder. But um, you know, it's you know, but I think it's the right thing, and I I know it is because I feel good about it, and that's very much how I make my decision. Welcome, everybody, to the Business of Luxury Weddings podcast. Man, we have a, a good one today, one of our favorite humans, truly, yeah. the incredible Lindsay from Bybello. So welcome, yeah. Lindsay. Thank um, you we're big, You know we're a big fan. So, so yeah, well, now, let's chat. It, same over here. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller, I guess. So. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> big fan of you guys, always, um, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Yeah. All right. yeah, we appreciate you being here. Can you just take five, two minutes, two, five minutes and tell us a little bit about, I mean, we obviously we know you, we've been working with you in Colorado for many years. Lucky just ass. give us a quick overview of, of what, what is Bybello? Sure. Um, so I am um, a wedding and event planner. Uh, Bybello is a wedding and event planning company. Currently, we also offer floral design and we have a new sister company that we launched last fall that offers right. luxury tabletop rentals. Yeah. Um, I'm a Colorado native and have been uh, in this market for about 18 years now in different capacities. Yeah. And I've had my business for 10. Um, we, as much as I would love to work all over the world, we primarily work in the mountain West and I'm trying to kind of really embrace that in the last oh, yeah. couple of years. You know, we, we love to kind of be up here and, um, I have a great team that works with me that I've been able to, do. to keep <laughs> for a long time. You guys know them. And, um, yeah, I mean, we we're based in the Denver area, but we mostly find ourselves in the mountains and the surrounding areas. Yeah. Every, every couple of years we get to shoot you and your team. We've done this twice now. I just want to yeah. say that's a, such a highlight for me always to hang out with all of you ladies and shoot oh. and get all like, I just love it. It's great. It's so fun for us too. And I, I mean, it's, we can never have anybody else shoot us now. We're really, <laughs> <laughs> like well, you, you guys do it properly, right? Like yeah. it, it's like a whole, it's, it's a photo shoot with, you know, we have makeup, there's a studio, there's all these oh, things yeah. and yeah, it, it, I I that, but, you guys but you guys are so great. great. So fun. All of you, that whole team, right? Because one by one, we shoot you. There's so much personality. And then you go to the event with you guys and it's the same again. Uh, so <laughs> seriously. Well, you, it makes it so easy for us to, you know, translate from, you know, yeah, letting loose in the studio and then getting onto an event. We know you guys a little bit better each time. And yeah. we've always appreciated and enjoyed those times. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for all awesome the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as we were talking earlier, I just wanted to mention to the listener, I think this one's going to be a really, not that all the other ones aren't good, they all, all of them, but this one I think is going to be really interesting for that person who's trying to grow their business. Because as, as we were talking to, to Lindsay about growth and entrepreneurship, um, I just started to get excited about hmm. what we're going to talk about. So um, Lindsay, t tell us a little bit about maybe the trajectory of your business over the last six years. Um, how, what kind of growth have you seen and, and what do you attribute that growth to? Yeah. Um, so I'd say the last six years, you know, the first four years is really just figuring it out. And, you know, really <laughs> that was kind of me, you know, coming into this full time and, and realizing the landscape of the space and identifying, yeah. you know, where I wanted to be within that. Uh, the last six years, I think I've kind of gotten more settled into this space. I would say yeah, yeah. we're comfortably in the luxury market today and inching towards the ultra luxury market. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, and you know, the things that I think have helped us to get there is, um, you know, it's a few different things and it's looked different each maybe each year, each cycle, you know, kind of each booking cycle when I take the time to kind of identify and set goals and stuff. But um, going to engage has been something that's really great. Yeah. I remember, yeah. James, we hung out in Ireland. And I remember, you know, meeting you. And I think from that was when we started doing our first um, team shoot with you and, and kind of really identified that we wanted to work together more. Um, 
We brought floral in house, which was something that was a little bit of an experiment at the time for me. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the girls who had been with me since I started, her background was in floral design and I wanted to give her more and, and see what it would look like for us to kind of have creative control over such a big component over the design of our weddings. Uh, so having that gave me some freedom and flexibility to to invest in our clients and the weddings. Right. You know, I, I would see the potential for a wedding to be something and say, you know, you know, maybe I. I'm not as worried about profiting on the floral side of this, this mm. wedding, because I want to pump it up. I want to, yeah. I want to be generous. I want to really see more blooms here. Right. And so before our clients were really able to maybe didn't quite have those budgets that we're working with today, we were able to start making them look that way, uh, which oh, was something that I, you know, did at early on that kind of, you know, I guess a, a fake it till you make it kind of thing. No, it's amazing. Yeah. I love the thinking. It's so smart. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's almost smart. like a, a better version of the styled shoot that photographers oh, really? and planners do. Right. But, yeah. but we're always saying with a styled shoot, it's really, really hard. If you're trying to, to mimic, or if you're trying to style a million dollar wedding, it's impossible. Yeah. Right. You, yeah, you can't true. make a styled shoot look like a million dollar wedding. It's not possible. But now right. you're borrowing from your own resources a little bit, right? With the extra yep. floral, make it amazing. Yep. But now you've kind of outgrown yourself a little bit, right? It's switched yes. again. This is the, the earlier <laughs> conversation in business. It's always shifting. It's you're shifting always again. shifting. And, yeah. it, and as a business owner, you really always have to evaluate because now, um, so we, we've been operating that way, doing floral design in-house, and it's been great. But it is now, it's a big operation. I mean, you know, the weddings we do are big. They're at the tops of mountains, and we're, yeah. you know, overnight hanging however many hundreds of pounds of green are from the ceiling. And um, it's just a, a big team and a lot of stuff. And um, we also, last year, I decided to start a luxury tabletop rental company because yeah. I just felt like there was a huge hole in the market here. Um, and you know, our clients are coming mostly from the coasts, you know, New York, Mm -hmm. California, or, you know, the Southern States, like, you know, Texas is a big draw for us. And they see all these beautiful things, like all these other markets have these great resources and rentals and, um, they just haven't made their way here to Colorado yet. So we're spending a fortune to truck them in from out of state and it started to feel silly. And I even had one client saying, you know, what if I just buy these? It will be less expensive for me to purchase all the china yeah. I want. And then, you know, I'll give them to you for a slam and deal. And that was kind of where I thought about it seriously. And then I decided to actually do it. So when we started Bespoke by Bello and we decided to get all these really cool, you know, high design um, tabletop items, I didn't realize that it was going to be, you know, it was going to pull away from, or, or I guess, draw my attention away from the floral port part and, yeah. and space too. You know, we have this big warehouse and now it's filled with plates and, you know, it's kind of pressing into all of our vases and candelabras. And so I've just been evaluating if we want to continue to do that. And, um, yeah. and I'm leaning towards, no, I think this will be our last season of doing the floral design. Um, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with other florists and that creativity mm. that, you know, I now have so much knowledge having done it and I know the mechanics and I know the costs and I know, you know, what it takes, but I want to now, you know, I think give that responsibility to somebody else and, and work in collaboration. And then we have this other piece that we're proud of that we still feel like focuses our emphasis for design, which is something I've always been passionate about. Um, in a different way. Can I, can I ask you how? How do you? I'm, I have this anal, kind of very analytical part of of my brain that yep. like wants to <laughs> dig into to certain things. How do you make a decision like that? Are you very? Are you a data driven person? Are you a like man? This just doesn't feel right anymore. Are you looking I, at all the numbers? Like what? What are you? How do you make that decision? Like I oh, mean, gonna, I look at the numbers. I have to look at the numbers as a business yeah. owner, but I am not you know, a numbers person. Like, I think there's a lot of different people in this industry who certainly are, you know, right brain and left brain. I'm, you know, about as right brain as it gets. I'm very creative and I'm very intuitive and, you know, kind of go off of my gut and what feels good. You know, if I'm not enjoying it anymore, if it's starting to feel like I don't like that part of it, then I'm very quick to like let it go. Yeah. 
I, and I think that's a good personality to have if you have the other part, which you have, which is action. You're a doer. I'm a doer. You do. Yeah. You feel it and then you do it. You fa fail fast and often, right? And so, yeah. Uh, you know, you're not stuck. That's always stood out about you. You're doing well, it right now here. <laughs> right? Thank you're a planner. You. Yeah. And then you're a planner. Then you added floral and you grew floral to a level. Now you're like subbing it for this and you're connecting it and. You're doing, you're visioning and doing and do it's over and over with you. I love it. It's why you're thanks. so successful. Well, thanks. You know, I think, you know, it, it's, it's, it's certainly a lot, forever learning process, you know, and I think yeah. there's just so much to gain from, from experimenting like that. But yeah, a lot of the people that are close in my life are always like, really, what are you doing? Again? <laughs> you're, you know, you're changing this again. Like, cause it seems like it's working and in yeah. many ways it is, but you know, if you want to continue to level up and see yourself, you know, getting to a different place, I think you have to evaluate where you are and, and do the different components that are helping you to get there. You know, yeah. constant. Yeah. The other, other thing with dropping floral is just the headspace, right? You get yeah. some energy oh back there where you can you now think about the other brand more okay. clearly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I think, yeah, there's a part of it that's a social aspect too. You know, I, I'm a, you know, a people person. I love being around and there was mm. some aspect where I was like bringing it all together and it was like, yes, I have this great team and we're working through things together, but now I kind of get to call other friends that I admire in the industry and people wow. that I've been tracking for a really long time that yeah. are doing such amazing things and, um, you know, getting to expand your network in that way, just like, you know, working with Huge. you guys, working with other, what? you know, artists that we admire, this is another way for us to do that. And I think, um, there's a lot to be said for that. Can, can you just walk me but, through though? I mean, I keep going back to this, like, yeah. how do you make this decision? Cause Otto and I were just having this discussion. No, actually it wasn't even a discussion. You sent me a, you sent me a link to an Instagram post about the importance of, but it was a Jeff Be Bezos saying the, how right. important making a decision quickly and acting on it was. Yeah. So with that, can you just walk us through, and I don't know, maybe you're still in the decision process because you're like, maybe you're not going to let it go. But if I had to guess, I'd be like, it's 99% there. She's a god. Because yeah. you talked to us a little bit about revenue and like thinking, like thinking through how, uh, how, how that, that works out for your business. Like what, what are the things that you're thinking about? Yes. This decision? So I thought about it. I thought about it last season when it was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I thought there were moments where I think about it, you know, when we're like getting vans up to the top of Aspen mountain and, you know, where we're dealing with, you know, extreme heat and worrying about a product that dies. I thought about really? it again when I was, sending out all of my, you know, tax details and looking at how many freelancers I paid and how many people it takes to kind of keep this machine going. Yeah. Um, I thought about it again when I wanted to, when we were working on the proposals for this year and wanting to make sure that they felt fresh and different and not like something we had done before, which yeah. is hard, you know, when you have a team that's comfortable patterns, and yeah. you have inventory and things really? that you want to use again. Like, you know, I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do the same thing again. I don't want to use those same candlesticks. You know, I want to kind of get everything new. And so there's been a few things that I thought about. And then I kind of crunched the numbers a little bit. You know, I am a percentage-based planner. You know, that's how we structure our pricing. And um, one of the selling points I always had with floral in-house was that we do not take a percentage on the floral because it's an internal team management thing. I didn't feel right about doing that. And so... Mm -hmm. When I looked at me taking the percentage off of another florist and about what they would charge, um, the numbers were not that different <laughs> than what I actually take home. And that was the biggest eye opener. Yeah. You know, um, I think for me to have the benefit of having somebody else run that entirely and just work as a collaborative, creative partner um, and still make money was yeah. like, OK, then yeah. I think that feels like a lot less. And then bespoke is growing quickly. You know, I didn't yeah. know, I kind of did it selfishly because I just couldn't get <laughs> what I yeah. wanted here. And so I was like, never mind. I'll just buy it and rent it to I'll my clients. But now yeah. all my planner friends are calling us and we have a lot of stuff and a lot of cool events this year. And so we need more space. Um, so, you know, looking at the real estate that we have and what we're working with, that's another factor. And, and being passionate about that side of the business, I can really see myself 
you know, building that up and um, I'm just not as passionate about the floral anymore. So it's, yeah. it was kind of an easy choice. So it was a few different things. It was no, just, it's, okay. it's really helpful to see that laid out like that and go, Oh, you start really, taking things around. It's yeah. But it wasn't like easy. Thing, and it's it probably the little, harder thing to do. Yeah. You know, it would be easy to keep going as is because we do have a good system and everything mm-hmm. in place, mm-hmm. you know, shaking it up is, is harder. But, yeah, yeah. um, and it's, you know, but I think it's the right thing. And I, I know it is cause I feel good about it. And that's very much how I make my decisions. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. But I can see how good that new collaboration will be for, for your brand as well. You know, bringing in other partners, more heads at the table, more collaboration, as good as you guys are, it's just different, yeah. different people. Well, and we're limited. I mean, it's too right. much. You know, I can't, you know, and as our, our weddings grow, I mean, I, you, you know, you've worked with our clients, you know, there, there is a lot that is required of me yeah. uh, on the day. And I cannot really? be worried when the HIPAA falls over. Hours, like, totally. Yeah. Like it did. Um, and, and then it's story. worth pointing, it's worth pointing out, like, you're not closing the floral because it's not succeeding. You guys are amazing at it. I was working oh. through some galleries again. Your floral is ridiculous. Like, whoa, Thank incredible. You. So you're letting something go. That's good. That's successful. That's profitable mm-hmm. for something better, something new, you know, I, or different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I mean, that means no. a lot coming from you guys. I Truly. Know you work with the best, but no. um, yeah, no. I, I, it, it has been successful. And last year was the best year we've ever had, you know, yeah. it really was yeah. great, but it also feels good to kind of go out on top and not let it get to the point where you're like, it's mm-hmm. really, <laughs> not working or it feels even more difficult um you have to crash it <laughs> somebody else felt that it was difficult for us yeah. you know because it did this last year did require a lot of us um and i'd never want that to be something that the other creative partners feel like it's taking away from our primary goal which is being you know expert planners or you know from our clients so I'm curious with the new, sorry, James, with the new headspace, uh, oh, are you guys going to branch this out a little bit? Are we going to get to work with you internationally, you know? I don't know. I, yet. Know. Um, I think, there, I hope know? so. Um, yeah. You know, I think one of the things when I did this rebrand this past year, I worked with a wonderful um, PR company in good company and they were yeah. so wonderful to really help um identify where we are today, where we exist in this space and um, what we can really kind of lean into. But one of the things that they helped me to realize is that we really are, you know, kind of experts in the West. And um, I think as hard as that was for me to be like, but wait, you know, I, I want to do a promo wedding and I want to go to Paris and do these beautiful things we see our friends doing. But you know, this is also a destination that many people yeah. want to be. And, you know, we're fortunate to have Aspen kind of be our home Incredible. base and in our backyard. And so really, I'm trying to kind of, I guess, lean into that. And, you know, we love the Western welcome parties and they're, yeah, they're we don't see those going anywhere. Our clients always want them. So um, for that. now, I think we're, we're leaning into that, but it does give us more freedom. Part of the reason we said that was because it would allow us to drive our floral to any of these destinations and drive our rentals to any of these destinations. Yeah. By eliminating floral, we do have a little bit more um, mobility. So I would yeah. say, you know, I, if you guys, if you need a planner in Europe, call me. <laughs> I love how clear that is to you, though, the single mindedness of it. You're like, no, we're, we're this. We're focusing on this, the, the craft of it. I appreciate and that. And with that, you don't really lose because you have Santa Fe to the south. You have Wyoming to the north. You have Aspen and Telluride to the to the west. Like, I'm a oh, you have Nebraska yeah. to the east. Like, how amazing is that? Yeah. We were um, just in Park City. You know, I, I think there are, there are some really great markets there. Some really sorry, great markets in Nebraska. Yeah, I'm Nebraska. sorry for all of you who live in Nebraska. That was a yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but no, all those too, places please. you mentioned, some of our favorite, you know, locations. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And not far. I was I was gonna ask you on the letting the floral side go. I, I can imagine you, you said you love the creativity. How do you think that's gonna affect your creativity? I am hopeful that it will give me more space to think about, you know the other aspects of the wedding, the details and things that we were always passionate about, but, you know, we love getting into, you know, really 
designing an entire guest experience and experience. also the, Whatever. you know, the fun little pieces that we can even spend more time on custom fabrication things and, right. you know, really exceptional escort displays, things like that, that are really just us conceptualizing and not having to necessarily execute, you know, the, yeah. Yeah. eliminating the the mechanics and me having to think through like, okay, but how do we hang that? And how, how heavy is that? And making that somebody else's responsibility, um, I think allows me to kind of think even bigger. Yeah. And um, that's, that's what I'm hoping. That's, that's what I see in my head today. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put that creativity into the experience side more because you're yeah. not dropping floral. You have amazing partners doing that now, right? So, oh, right. Right now, you have headspace. You have time to envision the experience and be creative for that. And being able yeah. to pull, you know, one of the challenges we we ran into with floral is, you know, not every client has the same aesthetic. Um, mm. There's some common threads between our clients and what they gravitate yeah. to um about us but yeah. you know some want a really like ikibana style which you know was out of our comfort zone at the time when we were like okay like let's try and figure this out and create all this you know space and you know less stems and um now i can call somebody who really leans into that style yeah. and that is their jam and you know it doesn't have Especially. to be the same as the next wedding who wants everything dripping and floral. Um, so, you yeah. know, I think that's just, that is exciting. Yeah. yeah. But now you're walking up to the menu and you're going, okay, well, David Beam, Sarah, who, who, who do we feel like? Who's going to, yeah. who do we going to collaborate with? You know, that's amazing. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I was just going to mention that the collaboration that, that that's where I know we get excited about. And it just takes the whole event, I think to another l l layer when like you have headspace, but you still have that creativity right. and the collaboration to, make it the best for the client. It's yeah, fun. And and it's too, I think <laughs> it gives us a lot more time and, you know, freedom to check in with them more and really just be like, so hands on because we don't have to worry about this other component, which we've previously, you know, been the ones that are schlepping all of the ceremony aisle florals in front of the stage and, you know, things like that. Yeah. And more time to have lunch with us when we pass through town. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's close Most the company. Of course you can have lunch with us. Yes, of course. Close the company? <laughs> I would do that anyway, no matter yeah. how busy I was. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Well, um, Lindsay, what are you excited for for this year? I'm curious. Little question. Just what are you excited for? Is there a specific event or something uh, other than a new company? <laughs> other than that. <laughs> well, I think, you know, this year is a little bit of a lighter year for us. I know... Okay. Some people in the industry are experiencing, I guess, the ramifications of what they're calling a wedding gap. Um, but and at first it panicked me a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. so used to kind of staying busy and being on the hamster wheel. But now I'm actually excited about the yeah. head ace. And I think that may even be one of those things that um, has caused me to make some of these big decisions because I Terrible. have all of our weddings under control. We are we have one already done, actually, you know, um, yeah. And just a handful more, which is a lot less than we normally have. And so yeah. I'm excited about enjoying a little bit extra time with my family and, you know, enjoying a summer. Um, but, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, just really taking this time to, to be so intentional about what we're doing next. Um, yeah. I think sometimes when you're so in it, you don't get to see, you know, exactly where you are or, or you know, take that time to assess and, maybe raise your prices or, you know, think about right. where you want to go or try and, you know, manifest and cultivate um, a wedding in one of these markets where we haven't been yet. Um, you know, I think that's really what I want to try and do with this extra time. So I'm kind of excited about that, which is maybe not the answer you were watching. No, no, that's but, exactly right. Um, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And I'm excited that the weddings we do have, you know, because this wedding, this year, the booking process was a little weird. It was like everybody wanted to negotiate and play us against, you know, like lesser prices and things like that. And we held fast to where we, where we are and what we charge. And I feel good about that. And the clients no. that did hire no. us, they value us and what we do. And we have a great mm. synergy and mm. the weddings we will do this year, we're really proud of and excited. Yeah. About. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Can you talk, you mentioned goal setting earlier. I'd love to hear more about goal setting, but, but also tell me about your, your ability to take risk because 
like you said, we we <laughs> kind of really sat down and, and chatted maybe for the first time in Ireland, which was what is that eight, 2018? That sounds right. Yeah, 19, something like that. But that was kind of like a, a turning point for what was you know, for by Bello. Um, <laughs> Not 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 con- connecting with us is not the turning point, but I'm just saying. Like I, I feel like that was a uh, like you had made a decision, you had you had set a goal, mm-hmm. and now six years later, I feel like you've attained those goals and, and surpassed those goals. Oh, no doubt. How how do you go about taking risk? Because there's no doubt in doing what you've done to go, you know, to with the trajectory of your business, you've had to take risk. And I hear like with the new business, shutting down another one, you're taking risk to do these things. How do you assess risk? How do you, how do you go about taking on that risk? Because that's a little big question mark for people. I hear it all the time. Like, oh, it's so scary. Like, and then the, the, you overthink it and then you, it, you overthink it into inaction. And like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to not do anything. Yeah. Um, you, to be honest, I would say part of it is not, the key is not overthinking it. You know, I, I, like we said, I am a doer, you know, so sometimes I get this thought, this crazy thought, and then I just do it. You know, I, I say yes and figure the rest out later. I kind of put the wheels in motion before I have a second to really think about like, oh my gosh, this is really happening. Um, you know, a little bit of Mm -hmm. that, I would say sometimes I, you know, with this rental business, that was definitely the case. I was like, well, I've just bought these plates off of our bride. So I guess I'm starting a rental. It's brilliant and though. I love it was that. Like I, I just did it. Um, but I think, you know, the goal thing is interesting. You know, I, I, I am a, a little bit of a competitive person and I would say that's kind of a joke in our family, whether we're playing, you know, pickleball or golf or Candyland. you know, our whole family is kind of competitive <laughs> and that has been something that has actually served me really well of as course. an entrepreneur because I'm looking at these people I admire and, you know, if thinking like, well, if she can do it, then I can do it. Or, yeah. you know, look how far she came or what she's doing and, you know, really just being inspired by, but also like wanting to, you know, nice. do what I can do to get there. Um, so there's that. And I remember, you know, going to engage with, there's nothing better than, you know, being surrounded by the people who are at the top of their game and, you know, yeah. the best in the space and looking around and feeling like, oh my gosh, I have so far to go. Really? But also all this opportunity about, yeah. you know, right. there's, there's really no limit mm-hmm. on what you can do and who you, who can be your client and who you can partner mm-hmm. with and what you can charge. And I think learning all of that has been um, you know, so big for me. And as I've gotten a little bit more gumption, if you will, you know, I've taken the steps to kind of, in my mind, the only way to get there is by kind of taking some risk. Um, hey, no, there's no other way. And yeah. I think, you know, for me, I, I've had kind of, I've created these other avenues of revenue, which have helped me to give a little bit of like support in terms of the bottom line and allowed me to say, okay, I'm jumping up my pricing two percentage points, which can be a lot when you're looking at the, the budgets we're looking at. Um, and I'm okay if I don't book anything until they book me at this price point, you know, because I have, you know, either the revenue from floral or the revenue from my travel agents, you know, commissions from the room blocks we do or something like that. So a little bit of that cushion has helped me, um, to, to take those steps and not feel like I'm desperate to do something that may keep me in the same place for longer than I like. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I but you earned that cushion. You created yeah. that cu- cushion through your doing cause you're such a doer, right? Well, thank you. I'm trying, you know, we're, yeah. we're yeah, out but there the brand has that level of success where you can hold because of that activity, because underneath oh. it, you're, you're rolling and in, in energy is being produced, right? Nonstop. Yeah. So, so for, for that person, that planner who's listening, maybe she's in her second or third, fourth year and, and is, is afraid to take some of those risks. Mm-hmm. Can you talk through a little bit like those other revenue I mean, specifically, maybe the, the travel agent one, like that, mm-hmm. that to me sounds like a no brainer, right? I agree. I think it's a no brainer. Um, you know, I realized, I can't remember the year it was, but I realized that 
hotels, you know, oh, I, actually, I know exactly what it was. I did a big corporate event and I, we bought out three hotels in Denver. It was a summit and it was hundreds of rooms. I was working with their national sales manager and he was like, okay, and now all I'll need for your commission on these is your IATA number. And I was like, like say what? what number? <laughs> you know, and so I went, did some research, did every, I was like, well, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. Applied for the number, got it. And then just sent it to him. And then I did the math and I made 10% on every room that was booked for that entire conference. And it exceeded my fee for the event. Yeah. And that was like, oh my gosh, you know, I kind of just didn't know that that existed. And now yeah. I, I am so passionate about it. I t you know, all my planner friends, I'm like, have you gotten it yet? You know, like really bother people about it because it's just easy money that's there. It's a job that we're already doing. You know, we're always yeah. helping our clients get those um, room blocks. And, you know, it doesn't take away from anything that the client no. is paying. It's no. a commission that's coming from the hotel. And, you know, oftentimes with that accreditation, you get a better rate that then you can extend to your clients. And it's a selling point in that way. I mean, it they're brings value. about it. Yeah. yeah. So that has been really, you know, that's just, you know, those checks come in and it just feels so good to like have that yeah. other kind of padding. No um, I think if yeah. you're a planner and you're listening to this, get it today. The <laughs> website is intimidating, but it's not that hard. You need like one sponsor letter from like a venue, you know, which is, it Needed should be to easy to do. Um, and so you're a planner. So if you can't plan your way through that form, then maybe you should get out of the business. Yeah, we've, what? I mean, since I heard, heard of this the first time, we've been trying to think, how, do, how can we get in on this? It's like, man, <laughs> say what now? Like, you just yeah. get a percentage? <laughs> no I brainer. Mean, yeah. And then, yeah, it's just I great. Money. So, and I've learned so much about, you know, hotels and how they operate through having that, which is a huge part of our business. I mean, everybody is a destination client for us. So it's mm. every wedding needs it. So that has been big. And, um, and I think the other thing with the risk chain cake is, you know, nobody knows, you know, our pricing isn't published anywhere. And, you know, yeah. and with you guys, it's like, you know, you put together a proposal, nobody knows what you charged yesterday. Nobody knows what you charged for your last wedding. You just yeah. are what you're charging today. And if it doesn't work, you can change it. You can change yeah. it anytime. any time. Nobody knows. You know, I think that has always given me a little bit of, I don't know, comfort in knowing like, all right, I'm going to go big. I'm going to, you know, increase this and see what happens. And then when you book it, you're like, this is what I cost now. This is, this is what yeah. it costs to hire me. And it's so up. Yeah. But if you didn't book it, you can always go back and you know that you're comfortable at that rate and you have, you know, the history that, that proves that it works. Sure. Yeah. Or, or peak seasons where you're like, okay, I'm going to go to that number when, when my, the highest booking season. Yeah. And these other times of the year, we'll go back to our last year's pricing and sure go back and forth. I mean, that that's what hotels do, right? That's what that's, airlines do. Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's no harm or, or shame. Though I somehow think that in the industry, mm -hmm. a lot of people have that feeling like, oh, I can't tell people one price and then change it for a different date. Of course you um, can. <laughs> oh, you can. Yes. You can. <laughs> and you should. And you should. Yeah. You should yeah. because honest truth is it, it's not the same. The value is different. Christmas yeah. is more well, valuable the next Tuesday. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. <laughs> Lindsay, this has been really good. I've really yeah. enjoyed the conversation, but oh, I kind of yeah. want to go back to the question I asked earlier. Not that you didn't answer it, but maybe after we've talked through all of this. Can you summarize your your keys to to the growth of your business? You know, if it's two, three, four things, you're like, what are those things? And again, talking to that that planner who is new, two, three, four years in, wants to be where you're at. What would I, you tell her, him? I can think of a few key things. I think it's many little things, but I can yeah. think of a few big things that probably moved the needle. And one of the first ones was moving to a percentage based pricing structure, right. uh, which is a game changer, you know, understanding that and, I, and knowing that most of the top planners charge that same way. Um, and I got that from going to different engages and right. meeting with us people and sitting in a one-on-one -on -one with Marcy Bloom and, you know, those wonderful, talented artists that, you know, we're so inspired by. So the other thing, funny enough, was probably my own wedding, um, which I, you know, 
went through that process and when I got a little bit crazy in terms of spending or needing more <laughs> things, I would, you know, try and convince my dad and my husband, you know, this is an investment in my business. You know, you're investing in me. You're um, making money, man. You're making money. <laughs> <laughs> making money. Exactly. Um, but really it did work. You know, I, I wanted, you know, I obviously as a player designer and doing your yeah. own wedding, it was like, I had this vision and what I wanted it to be and then getting to actually bring it to life and um, in a place where I loved, you know, we got married in Aspen yeah. and I had done a few weddings there in the past, but not, as many as we do now ever since. And, you know, even today I still book clients from my wedding and sometimes mm. they know it was me and sometimes they don't, they'll just say, Oh, this beautiful blue and white wedding that you did at T lazy seven, you know, it was, you're we fortunate to have it featured in brides and, you know, I'll, I'll go on Pinterest and I'll be looking at something and I'll see images from our wedding. And, you know, that just means so much to me. And I think that was one of the things that helped me to, solidify myself as a planner in the Aspen market, yeah, you know, really. and doing those tented weddings in mountain meadows. Um, and I think, you know, the other things, you know, really connecting with those venues, doing a great job when you do have the opportunity to, you know, the first time we had the opportunity to work at the little Nell, I just took it so seriously. And I, I, you know, did everything that we could possibly do to wow, not only our clients and the creative partners we're fortunate to work with, but the venue, you know, we yeah. were, we felt like it was such a privilege to be there and sure. one of these, you know, iconic venues. And fortunately they, you know, liked us and wanted to have us back. And so they put us on their vendor list. And, you know, that is something that has been huge for us, you know, mm -hmm. being a recommended yeah. partner of certain venues where often, you know, the client will get engaged and say, Oh, I've always dreamed of getting married on top of the mountain. So they reach yeah. out to the little Nell and then they say, Oh, well then you should call by Bello. They're a great local creative mm -hmm. partner. Um, so that's another kind of big thing that has helped us tremendously. It's still every year, you know, we get the privilege of working um, with them. And sometimes with you guys, we've done yeah. our things there together. Yeah. Um, so I think those are some of the bigger ones. And then, you know, the, the side businesses, you know, starting those kind of sister businesses. Yeah. Those have helped us. It's your travel agency, damn it, today. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a travel agency, a floral company, a rental company. No, um, it doesn't need to be all those. But having having the multiple arms in a way, I think, has given me some credibility. And yeah. it has been a selling point to the high net worth client that, that yeah. sees something in us that they like, you know, the white glove turnkey approach. And I think that yeah. has allowed us to continue to book more of the ideal client that we, we want to book. Sure. That's Can, great. That's great. Bravo, bravo to you, Lindsay, seriously, oh, bravo God. on your success and all of it. Well, thank you. You, you, you made all of it, all of it you did. Wow. It's well, thank remarkable, you. isn't it? It is weird to, to sit here yeah. and talk about it and look back and, but no, yeah. seriously. I'm, I'm just like proud of you. Like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you did that shit. That's all you. Bravo. Thank and you're you. not done. You're far from done. No, not done. Yeah. Just <laughs> not just, done. I yeah. still love it. Floral, but not done. And I think you have to love it. You know, I guess I didn't ever yeah. say that, but like, I love what I do, you know, yeah, and I think, you know, bad. if you're passionate about it, it's so easy to spend tons of time thinking about it, planning, plotting, you know, I really still love it today. You know, I've been yeah. in doing this for 10 years and I don't see myself stopping. I just want to keep doing it and getting better. And yeah. I love, love it. it. <laughs> yeah, well, we amazing. appreciate you. We appreciate yeah. your business. We appreciate would... the collaboration and we appreciate you coming on and, and telling our listeners and, and, informing us and educating us on how do we be better so thank you well Seriously. thanks for having me what an honor i love your podcast love everything you guys do and always what? just love hanging out with you too yeah let's do dinner and again. working with us you also love working with us we, we should do that more working with you <laughs> i'm working on getting another wedding with you guys so yeah I'm missing always you. love it <laughs> big fans Lindsay. thank well, you thank you both so much for your time and for having me